Hello, in this video I'm going to look at an oddball set from the mid-1980s, in particular the 1985 Fun Foods button set. Now I believe this set was issued maybe late in 1984, you will see it referenced as a 1984 set sometimes. I'm going to uh, consult my old Sports Collector's Digest uh, baseball card price guide from, I think this was 1987, it's the first edition. Um, to get a little period information on this set, that's Fleer, Fun Foods. So, I can get the pages to open up. Here we go. So, they show Dwight Gooden there, and it says Fun Foods of Little Silver, New Jersey issued a set of 133 full color metal pins in 1985. The buttons, which are one and a quarter inch in diameter and have a safety pin back, have bright borders which correspond to the player's team colors. The button backs are numbered and contain the player's 1984 batting or earned run average. The buttons were available as complete sets through hobby dealers and were also distributed in packs, three buttons per pack through retail stores. So I definitely remember when these came out and I was pretty excited. This was probably the first first baseball card type item that I ordered uh, through the mail and you can see I ordered from Continental Cards Company in Gilbert, South Carolina. I did a quick web search for them today. I uh, could not find them so I, I'm thinking they're out of business. If you know otherwise I would be interested to know. Um, I think that would be pretty neat to, to know if they were still around. Um, but uh, I ordered these in the summer of 1985 and I remember waiting forever and ever and ever for them to come and one day I was in a my little backyard swimming pool and a UPS truck drove up and he had my desired package and so I cut my swimming session short. I went in and busted these babies out. I probably haven't had them out of this box in a good 20 years. There's some detritus from bugs and so forth in there. But I thought it would be fun to take a look at them here. Always a good time for an oddball set. I don't know if I'll go through every one. But I'll at least lay them out. Gary Ward. Let's see what kind of real estate we got. Okay. Don Baylor, the Yankees. These are obviously not going to be in numerical order since I'm just grabbing a pile and throwing them out here. Looks like I've got a lot of uh, blue ones to start with. There's Ryan Sandberg, the Cubs. So 84 was his breakout year. So he was definitely a superstar of the hobby by the time these came out. Don Sutton looked old to me then, looks pretty young to me now. Funny how that works out. Tony Pena. My all-time favorite player, Mike Schmidt. It's Tony Armas. And you can see the backs that they were talking about. So Tony Armas was number 24 of 133. Played the outfield. So two, two separate words. That's interesting. His average in uh, 85 or 84 was 268. And it does have a 1984, um, 1984 copyright date on it with the Major League Baseball logo. So it's it's kind of uh, nice that these oddball this oddball issue has, you know, full team logos and reg regalia there. Okay, let's make sure I'm staying in frame. Let's see here. Greg Nettles, don't call me Craig. Got Lamar Hoyt. Dave Winfield. Buddy Bell. So many great players that kind of just slide out of our consciousness if Rick Sutcliffe 
yeah, if they don't make the Hall of Fame, obviously some of these guys have. Rusty Staub passed away last year, I think. It's always fun to go through and see the old familiar faces again. The great ride career. John Candelaria, Candyman. Wade Boggs. Greg Lezinski. Boggs and Lezinski kind of opposite sides of the hitting coin. Although Liz, or, uh, Boggs did crank up the power a little bit there. Was it in 87 or something when everybody was hitting home runs. John Denny. 83 Cy Young winner in the National League. The great Tom Seaver. Another member or a member of the Big Red Machine. I guess Seaver wasn't technically one. It's George Foster. A monster 1977 season. Lloyd Mosby. Blue Jay standout in the 80s. Dave Rigetti. Threw a no hitter. Then became a closer. The Angels. Oh, the Angels Phil Necro. You can hear the nice metal sounds there. They definitely, definitely are metal. Tommy John. So these have held up pretty well in their, their little baggy home here over the years. Hope exposing them to fresh air doesn't kill them. Aurelio Lopez. Reggie. Getting towards the end of the line there. Still had a couple years left. And some more stuff falling out. Willie Randolph. Bob Horner. Another big bopper. Carlton Fisk. Who played basically forever also. Sort of like Necro. Not quite that long. Mike Marshall. The second Mike Marshall for the Dodgers. The first was a pitcher in the 70s. Willie McGee, speedster for the Cardinals. There's the great Nolan Ryan. It's probably the best button in the bunch, or best part of the player selection. He's this, my particular copy. He's a little scuffed up and so forth, but looking strong. Ron Guidry had a big year for the Yanks in 85. Jack Clark and his massive eyebrows. He's Keith Hernandez. It's required that I do that every time something Keith Hernandez comes up. Al Holland. Dwight Gooden, who is smoking the hobby at this point. 1985 was an amazing season for him. Steve Garvey. Robin Young, who had won... Won American League MVP award and would win a second in '89, I think. The second one came. Okay, so let's see here. Mario Soto, underrated great pitcher for the Reds in the '80s. Lots of smoke. Another underrated player, Dwight Evans, Dewey. In my opinion, he's got a strong Hall of Fame case. Oral Hershiser, who was just on the birds of really breaking out when the Fun Food set came out. Kent Herbeck, Harvey for the Twins. Danny Trio. Leon Durham, and his shiny glasses. Joaquin Andahar. Anduhar, sorry. Ron Say, the Penguin, playing for the Cubs at that point. Bob Dernier for the Cubs. Those were guys that helped the Cubs win their division title in 84. George Bell, who had won an American League MVP award. Mike Boddicker. One of the long line of really good Orioles pitchers, Dwayne Murphy. That's a nice green on that one. Gorman Thomas. So they did a Fun Foods. I'm not really sure what they did, but they did a good job with the colors here. George Hendrick. 
really matched up well, I think, with the team colors. Photos are bright for the most part. But look at that, a young, mustacheless uh, Don Mattingly, fresh off of his 1984 batting title that he took on the last day from teammate Dave Winfield. Paul Molitor, still at that point struggling to stay healthy and on the field. A young Kyle Ripken Jr. Just still kind of at the beginning stages of his streak. Tricky Henderson. Kind of looks like the photo that was on one of the Fleer Superstar Specials. Steve Sachs looking unamused. The late great Dan Quisenberry with a wad in his cheek. Um, he was one of the great uh, closers of the 80s. Helped the Royals to win their 85 World Series the year this that I got these uh, Fun Foods buttons. Mark Langston of the Mariners. Storm Davis of the Orioles, great name. The kid Gary Carter, off-centered I would say, <laughs> slightly, Montreal Expos. Mike Hargrove, it's kind of almost strange seeing him as a player now. Used to him as a manager type. I do remember buying a, a couple of packs of uh, of these at a card show or something, and they were they came in these little envelope type things with I think three buttons per pack. It's Jose Cruz of the Astros, and a senior. Alvin Davis. Slugger for the Mariners before they were really winning much. Andre Dawson. A couple of years before he left for the Cubs. Thanks to the collusion ruling. Burt Blylevin. Be home Blylevin. Hall of Famer. Joe Necro. He of the Emory Board in his back pocket. Scott McGregor, another wonderful Orioles pitcher. They had plenty of them. Dave Kingman, who always looked like he was ready to come through the camera and kick some tail. Jody Davis, catcher for the Cubs. Johnny Ray, who would have an error card, variation card run in with Barry Bonds in the, in the uh, 1987 Donruss opening day set. Cecil Cooper. Kurt Gibson. Getting ready for postseason heroics. Had had some in 84. Eddie Murray. Another postseason hero. Darrell Evans, another Evans who's underrated. I think could probably get into the Hall of Fame someday. Raleigh Fingers, also, or already in the Hall of Fame. Charlie Huff, pitched for a long, long time. Great Lou Whitaker, he's got to be in the Hall of Fame. Come on. Trammell's in there, Morris is in there. Joe Morgan, right at the end of his career with the A's. Dave Steeb. At least as good as Jack Morris in my book. Chris Shambles. He's making a nice uh, kind of rainbow effect. I still seem to be picking a lot of blues up here. Gary Matthews, Sarge. I first saw him playing uh, in the 83 postseason with the Phillies on TV, of course. Willie Wilson. And I saw him in 84 with the Cubs. And Ogilvy, another one of the, those Harvey's wall bangers from the early 80s Brewers. Fernando Valenzuela. Willie Hernandez, American League MVP in 84. It's kind of a strange choice, but it was so. Frank Tanana, an MVP, had to be a Tiger player. Doug DeSensei, uh, California Angels. Steve Kemp, kind of a forgotten power source from that era. Mookie Wilson. 
Goose Gossage, another Hall of Fame reliever. Terry Kennedy, All-Star Catcher. Harold Baines, a Hall of Famer, whether you like it or not. That's another thing that I have to say every time. Ron Davis, who was a pretty much a lockdown reliever for a while there. Won some, won some well, sorry. Um, who could do most uh, toolsy things on the diamond. Ted Simmons, who, as I shoot this, has just recently been elected to the Hall of Fame by the, uh, the Veterans Committee. Dan Petrie, or is it Petrie? I think it's Petrie. Cesar Cedeno, one of my favorite reds from early in my fandom. I got a fistful of red coins here. Steve Carlton still with the Phillies here. Before it all went crazy with the team hopping. Lee Smith, Hall of Fame reliever. Chet Lemon, another key part of those 84 Tigers. Gary Gaetti. Great mustache, 80s mustache. Slugger for the Twins. The legendary Tony Gwynn. Late great. Bruce Suter. Another Hall of Fame reliever. So the relievers have gotten some Hall of Fame love here recently. Tom Bernanski. Another master for the Twins. Andre Thornton. Who had some really good years that are mostly... Unremembered, unremembered at this point. Bill Buckner, the late Bill Buckner, who was still a year or so away from playing the GOAT role for the Red Sox in the World Series. Ron Kittle, who lit up the American League as a rookie in 1983. Tony Perez, doggy. Reds Hall of Famer. Bob Stanley. Kent DeColbe. It's a really good shot of Tacoby. He always looked pretty much like that, but it's a good smile. Lots of good pirate yellow there. Getting close to the end. Bill Madlock, who could hit 300 with a toothpick. Daryl Strawberry, who was super popular during this time period too. Dave Parker, who was getting ready to turn in an MVP type season with the Reds. He was my favorite red those middle years of the 80s. Chili Davis, Ozzie Smith, the great Ozzie Smith, Frank White, part of the 85 Royals championship team, Jack Morris, Hall of Famer, Tim Raines, Hall of Famer, lots of great players in this era and in this set, Jim Rice, Hall of Famer, Alan Trammell, Hall of Famer. Had a good run going here. Fred Lynn, who was the uh, American League rookie, rookie of the Year and MVP in 75, when Rice was also a rookie. So it was going to be a race to see who finished better. Lynn had some injury problems, and Rice ended up with a little better career. Carney Lansford, who was a big average hitter in the early 80s, late 70s. Willie Upshaw for the Blue Jays. Blue Jays unis look good. Pedro Guerrero. The Dodgers. Two-time MVP, Dale Murphy of the Atlanta Braves. Looking happy and young there. Legendary George Brett of the Royals. Davy Concepcion of the Reds. Larry Boa. Then with the Cubs. And finally, Hal McRae, who had played for the Reds and is with the Royals here. So there you have it. The 1985, so we can focus it in, uh, Fun Foods button set. It's been in my collection for a long time. and It'll probably stay here with me as long as I've I got a couple of breaths left in me. Uh, but hope you enjoyed seeing this spread. It's a... A fun oddball set and the nice thing is you can buy it on ebay or whatever these days for probably less or at least close to what i paid for i think you know 15 bucks or so you can get it for 
So that's not a bad deal for a 35 year old set that displays really well. So if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing to our channel. Thanks a lot.